So over the years, I've visited a lot of different states in my travels, and Iowa ain't one of them. Until right now. And let me tell you something about Iowa. It looks like the furthest thing from trout country in the entire world. The only reason I know that Iowa has some badass trout country is because of longtime Hookshots fan Dave Strub. Dave has been sending me pictures of 24 plus inch balls of butter for years now and trying to convince me to come here to Iowa and fish the Driftless area. I finally called Dave up and said, yo man, I am coming out this year and I'm bringing my boy Mike Sudol along with me. Joe and I haven't been out in a little while. My phone rings and uh, Yanti answered the phone. He's like, hey man, uh, do you want to go to Iowa? I was like, yeah, sure. What are we fishing for? This is brown trout. Said, Get the hell out of here. Iowa, brown trout? I mean, you know, I would never guess. So then he says, yeah, not, not only are we fishing Iowa, I got this, I got this dude, all right? This guy's been hitting me up. He is kind of like a cross between the trout fishing Jesus and Tom Petty. Yeah, so what I do in my system is chucking big crankbaits. The bigger, the better. I mean, bruisers. That's what I hunt. And when Mike and I were talking about this trip, I said, yo, look, I am not opposed to throwing stick baits for trout, but there's no way we're not going to bring our, our streamer gear and try to, you know, hook this up. So our plan is to fish up Iowa. This is not a drift boat, clack of craft, row yourself kind of scene. Dave rolls with some old school rectangle bass raiders, plastic bass raiders. Easy, tiger. <laughs> I'm a hole hopper. I go to one spot, chuck the big baits, no show, burn down the next hole, work the piss out of that, and nothing, jump to the next one, and oh! <laughs> the thing is, when we got to the upper Iowa that first morning, Mike and I took one look at it and went, I don't know what clean is here, but man, it was dirty. Unfortunately, about a week before, we get pounded six inches of rain. And I'm going, oh, go, go, God. You know, we couldn't wade to where Dave wanted us to be because it was too high. It was so dirty. Luckily, though, see, Dave has a bunch of tricks up his sleeve. While the big upper Iowa is kind of his main deal and what he really wanted us to fish, he says a lot of times what I do is I park my kayak or my bass raider at the mouth of where these smaller trout streams dump in and walk my way up. We pull up in this little place called Coldwater Creek and, uh, you know, the water's off a little bit, but to me, the clarity is perfect for streamer fishing. Now the way Dave fishes is unlike anything I've ever seen before. He's like sprightly. He like dances through the woods like his feet aren't touching the ground. I'm like left foot, right foot, pulling this one out of mud, getting this one over a root, and he's like a hundred feet ahead of us already. Dave's philosophy is first, second, third cast is gonna get that big fish. Otherwise, it's just time to move on. So I come up to a hole, number 14 husky jerk, and you airmail that bitch, and then you're bringing it back and you're snap, 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 pause, stop! And nothing is happening. Mike and I are throwing big streamers. Dave is chucking his big stick baits and his swim baits. It's just eating at me. It's, it's eating at Joe, it's eating at Dave. And finally, we get to one turn that's like the juiciest of them all, and literally Mike is fishing, and the words come out of his mouth, like, I would feel so much better if we just moved one. Like that. <laughs> Dude, don't f around, go. He didn't touch it, did he? You know, nice fish, not Dave standards, but at least a 20 inch fish. And that little bastard just wouldn't commit. And we worked another mile up Coldwater Creek. Never moved another fish. I'm starting to get a little worried. So we had some pretty good Thunder Boomers roll through Decorah last night. Now the plan for the second day was to fish Canoe Creek, in fact a private stretch of it. Okay, Dave knew the landowners and he was going to get us in a little sneaky sneaky. Well that night, yeah 11 o'clock, boom crash, oh sh It's a little chocolatey buddy. Yeah. Our only hope was that maybe Coldwater Creek didn't mud over. You know, we did move a really nice fish the other day before. The thing is, because we don't have the Bass Raiders today, we're in for a long hike today, aren't we? Oh, yeah, good times. <laughs> 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 but you know, the clarity was still there. It still looked good, and we start pounding holes right away, and we're like, we're gonna take our time, we're gonna work them methodically. And uh, we're, 
we're moving no fish. This is no Gouda. Now I'm gonna be real honest here. I came out here to play Dave's game. I want the big fish and I'm gonna throw the biggest crap that I have to to get it done. But after a full day and a half of that just not getting it done, I started thinking to myself, I gotta make a change here. I gotta do something different. So we brought everything big and Joe's looking for the smallest streamer in his box and found the tiniest little lunch money shad I had. I'm hooked up. So that is obviously not the one that we came out here for, but we are working so hard just for kicks. I thought, well, I'm gonna put on a real small fly and I've moved three fish, one of them bigger than this, so. Suddenly everything changes for us. You know, we've got confidence, we're in the zone. <sighs> but he, he was hot on that fly I too, know. man. And all of a sudden, man, we're getting swooped in this run and turned on in this oh, run and flashed man. in this run. Now the funniest thing about this is because Dave is a hole hopper and a fast one at that, Mike and I were freaking killing the poor dude. Started at the back of the hole, couple of casts, couple of casts, next guy up, nothing. I'm sitting there going, oh God, this is like, it, it's straight Chinese water torture, it is. It's about equal. <laughs> yep, oh yeah. You know, so we're, we're, we're moving a lot of fish and uh, we get to the top of a run and I'm over Joe's shoulder and, and this fish just romps it. Now, by Dave's standards, shake that shit off the line. As far as I was concerned, I worked really freaking hard for that fish. And even though it was not a Goliath, it was a beautiful, healthy, chunky little piece of Iowa butter. This is not a Dave caliber fish, but uh, considering the struggle, I'm happy about it. You know, you, you land a big fish, you're getting excited. Now we get, now, you know, the rest is gonna be gravy. And uh, we immediately noticed that the water is starting to get darker and darker. So it's like just when we feel like we've maybe started to dial these browns in a little bit, it's like last night's rain is starting to catch up here too. And it was getting muddy. So we hit it right at close to prime time. But unfortunately, we just did not stick the big one. What's up everybody? Dirty water got you down? You know, popping corks have been a staple in the south for decades. Even in the muckiest of mud, they help sea trout and redfish home in on any plastic you got under it. But what I can never figure out is why freshwater guys don't lean on popping corks too. By rigging classics like swim baits, senkos, and grubs under a smaller popping cork, not only will you increase your casting distance to cover more water when it's dirty, drawing attention to your soft plastics with those subtle chubs can be the difference between a muddy water skunk and muddy water glory. Anyway, I hope things start popping off in Iowa. A little tougher to get up on that last day. End of day two, streams are all shot. I decided before supper, I gotta do some recon. So the night before, Dave did a bunch of scouting and he says, I got this place that's got some clean water called Waterloo Creek. Said it's not my favorite, but it's clear and it's fishable and there are some good fish in it. Now, it may not have been Dave's favorite, but Mike and I took one look at this river and we're like, Oh, this is juice. Oh God, hit him! Netter, 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 oh! Every hole we hit, if you think there's gonna be a brown trout there, there's a brown trout there. Oh, God damn. After the holy hell that we've been going through, I was stoked. Compared to the last two days, this river right here is paradise. Dave's back there like you guys and your little trout, but. They were on, it was finally what I was hoping for. Not quite the size, but hey, a fish is a fish. We're moving a lot of fish. It's not the way Dave fishes. He still has his big jerk baits and jigs, you know, the works. And, uh, and we get a little bit ahead of Dave, which is pretty rare on this trip. And as we're working a, a run, you hear, oh! He just comes walking around the corner with the biggest fish of the entire trip in his net. I mean, it was just this fat yellow gold 18 incher. And you could tell he still was not really amped about it. But at the end of the day, you know what? The dude stuck to his stick baits and that ended up sticking the biggest fish of the entire trip. The first two days, man, that just, but hey, that's why they call it fishing, right? 
Overall though, I'd say it was fun. I have never worked so hard for such small fish in my life. Oh my God. To me and Joe, I mean, this is almost world-class streamer fishing. I mean, this is by far is one of the best days I've ever had on the streamer. Not necessarily with fish caught, but with fish moved. And the truth is, the trap fishing is amazing here. Even if you come here and you don't get one of those 28 inch hogs that's tucked up in there, if you just love wild brown trout, this is a place you need to fish at some point in your life. And if you ever do show up here, look up Dave Strum, because you will never have as much fun on a trout stream as you will with that dude. Again. You are crazy, but I love it. <laughs> like, cool. That one was like 10 inches. Awesome. Jane Clear. Oh, yeah. Little bugger got off, but those normally I just shake off anyway. Get over there.